dynamic stock master. Unit number three, two degrees of freedom systems, undamped vibrations. So, in this presentation, we are going to see how a combined rectilinear and angular motion is going to occur in some systems and how we can determine the natural frequencies of it. So, definitely when there is a combined angular and uh, rectilinear motions are there, that means there are two displacements, one is rectilinear displacement, linear displacement and other is angular displacement. So, it is a two degree of freedom system. Even though we will consider that a single mass is there, but displacements are of two kind. So, now you just consider here, like it is a block here and it is supported on the two springs, K1 and K2 are the stiffness of the spring and suppose M is the mass of this particular spring, uh, sorry, of this particular block. So, this is the stiffness K1 of the spring, this is stiffness K2 of the spring and uh, this is nothing but the center of gravity of this particular mass and uh, these springs are located at a distance of L1 from this CG of this mass and L2 that is this K2 is at a distance of L2 from this. Now, when some force is acting over this, so it will get displaced though, like it is being rotated in a clockwise way. So, because of this clockwise rotation and at the same time it is in downward motion. So, uh, linear okay. motion of this will be in the downward direction. So, that is nothing but the x and it will get rotated about this particular axis by an angle theta. So, this is rotation theta. Okay. Same thing is specified over here. This is the angular rotation angular motion theta and this is the displacement x. So, this block will move downward by some distance and also be rotated about this axis by angle theta. So, whatever will be the displacement of this uh, spring k1 and shipness k1 and shipness k2 that if we try to find out. So, this spring will get compression of this x as well as due to this theta there will be certain displacement of it. So, total displacement of this K2 will be x, x plus this nothing but now length is L2. So, L2 into theta. So, L2 into theta. Okay. So, this is the total displacement. x plus L2 into theta will be the displacement of this K2. While uh, the displacement of K1 will be x in the downward direction and as due to rotation this will move up. So, x minus L1 theta. So, L1 theta is the distance by which it will get moved in the upward direction. So, final displacement of this K1 will be x minus L1 into theta. Okay. Now, we will try to draw the free wire diagram of this particular mass or this particular block and we will be present different forces acting on this. So, this is the thing about the tilted position of this block. This is center of gravity of this. So, whatever the spring force we generated here, that will be proportional to the displacement uh, and it is the product of stiffness multiplied by the displacement. So, stiffness is k1 and x minus l1 theta is the displacement. So, this is the force acting in the upward direction. Okay. Similarly, the force acting on this spring, so both will be having compression. So, therefore, the opposite force will be acting as a reaction on this mass. So, k2 multiplied by x plus l2 into theta, that is the upward force. Okay. Now, as this particular block is rotated clockwise, so anti-clockwise will be the inertia torque acting on this and that is equal to I into theta double dot. So, it, I is the mass moment of inertia of this block and theta double dot is the angular acceleration of this block. At the same time, uh, linear displacement is in the downward direction x. So, acceleration in the linear direction will be m into x double dot. So, mass into acceleration. So, okay. So, m into x double dot. Okay. So, with the help of this free wire diagram. Now, we can write the differential equation of motion for this. So, one will be in for the linear case that means this m into x double dot plus this k1 into x minus l1 theta plus k2 into x plus l2 theta. Okay. And second will be due to this moment. Okay. So, i into theta double dot and the couple due to this force about this g and coupled due to this force about the g. So, let us write the equation. So, first due to this m into x double dot so it will be m into x double dot plus k1 into x minus l1 theta plus k2 into x plus l2 theta so this is the first equation in the linear case okay so addition of this three forces this one this one and this one 
now we'll write the couple so it is anti clockwise couple okay due to inertia of this mass so i and theta double dot is anti clockwise now this k1 into x minus ln theta that will be clockwise moment so it will be in the opposite of that so we'll write minus k1 into x minus ln theta into l1 because the distance between the cg and this is considered as l1 and this couple is in the same direction as it is inertia couple is there so it is plus k2 into x plus l2 theta into l2 so in this way you have done these two equations one from the for the linear and another for the angular motion of this particular block now let us simplify this by multiplying it okay so after simplification we will get this the mx term will be as it is this k1 into x okay and here k2 into x so i will write k1 plus k2 into x and then here k1 minus l1 theta and here k2 l2 theta so minus sign if i take common in bracket it will be k1 l1 minus k2 l2 into theta equal to 0 so it means i am separating the term of x and theta like this similarly from the second equation this i into theta part will be as it is minus will be there so k1 x k2 x will be there and then l1 square into theta into k1 like that is the term so i will write here as first k1 l1 minus k2 into l2 into x so this is k1 l1 sorry this one l1 and x okay so this is k1 l1 x and then k2 x and l2 so this is k2 l2 x plus this k1 l1 square and theta so k1 l1 square and theta and k2 l2 square and theta like this the terms will be there so here you will observe that these two equations will be consisting the term of x double dot of x as well as to having the term of theta similarly the second equation also theta double dot x and theta it means these equations are combined that means if we give any one displacement if i give displacement x to it it will also rotate or if i give theta angular rotation to that if i just rotate that block it will also have the linear displacement so like this they are dependent on each other okay so with these equations now we will see that these uh, are called as the coupled differential equations so as i give displacement x so it will be displaced by theta also or if i give theta it will be displaced by x also so therefore it is called as coupled differential equations and uh, let us consider the special case of this suppose if we consider that uh, it is only dependent on x and means you have to make it independent of each other suppose so for that we require that this k1 into l1 must be equal to k2 into l2 so that this term will be zero and this theta will not be there similarly this term if i put k1 l1 is equal to k2 l2 so x term will be vanished from this particular equation so it means it will be independent equations so let us consider here first case that k1 into l1 is equal to k2 into l2 so m into x double dot plus k1 in k1 plus k2 into x equal to 0 so this term is cancelled out similarly here i into theta double dot plus k1 l1 square plus k2 l2 square into theta equal to 0 so these are the uncoupled differential equations now and now we can try to solve these uncoupled differential equations and we can get the natural frequency of the system so these are nothing but our equations which are uncoupled equations so simply if i compare this equation with a simple harmonic motion so it will be x double dot plus if i do, uh, divide this by m so the term will be coming over here m okay if i remove this term from here and i will write in the denominator here m so this term k1 plus k2 divided by m is nothing but equal to omega n square and therefore omega n is equal to under root of k1 plus k2 by m this is the natural frequency in the linear case and similarly if i divide it by i so it will be in the denominator i here so this is nothing but again omega n square so omega n2 will be equal to under root of k1 l1 square plus k2 l2 square divided by i so these are the, part of the two natural frequencies that you will get when this particular equations are uncoupled that means that condition is required to be satisfied that this k1 l1 must be equal to k2 into l2 then this is possible similarly now we will see the another condition so in this case now we will see that uh, a second case where 
this k1 l1 this product is not equal to k2 l2 okay so when this product is not equal then what will happen so if we have to solve this equation now assuming the solution of this differential equation has x is equal to capital x sin of omega t and therefore x double dot will be is equal to minus omega square x sin of omega t and theta is equal to phi sin of omega t and therefore theta double dot will be equal to minus omega square phi sin of omega t so let us use this substitution into this particular equations so m into x double dot is there so there i will write minus omega square x sin of omega t now everywhere sin omega t term will be there so sin omega t term i will not write so I will just write the o minus omega square into x. So I am writing minus omega square into x and m was already there, mass. So this is the term that I am getting. Similarly here k1 plus k2 into x, okay. Then minus k1 l1 minus k2 a2 into phi. So instead of theta it becomes phi. Because sin omega t term is a common, so that is cancelled out. So then I am trying to simplify this now. So terms of x I will add. So this is k1 plus k2 minus m omega square ax is equal to k1 l1 minus k2 l2 into phi so i will get the ratio of this x and phi these are the two amplitudes x and phi so this x and phi is equal to k1 l1 minus k2 l2 upon k1 plus k2 minus m omega square this is the term that i am getting okay now similarly i will use the second equation of this uh, i into theta double dot minus k1 l1 minus k2 l2 into x plus k1 l1 square plus k2 l2 square into theta and in this case i am putting the substitution of theta as well as of the x so theta double dot is nothing but minus omega square phi so accordingly i will be putting all these values and i am trying to get the ratio of again x by phi similar to the we have got it for the last equation and that i am getting it like this so this uh, ratio of x by phi and the previous ratio of x by phi that one which you have seen uh, in the previous slide that is here x by phi okay so this and uh, this ratio will be equated and cross multiplied so in the denominator it was k1 uh, in the numerator in the previous case it was k1 l1 minus k2 l2 and here it is in the denominator so that cross multiplication will be nothing but its square and this term and this term will be multiplied now multiplication of this and just simplified uh, simplification of this so i will be getting this kind of equation so i m omega raised to 4 okay and this is what I am getting the equation. Now this equation uh, it is in the omega raised to 4 so we have to solve it for the getting the roots of this equation. So we can convert this omega square as any anything we can put like uh, lambda is equal to omega square okay and uh, we have to find out the uh, value of this lambda by considering it is a quadratic equation. So we can use the equation of minus b plus minus one hundred b square minus 4 c upon twice a that we can use okay and get the roots of this so whatever the two roots that we will get are nothing but the two natural frequencies for this particular system so this is the way we can solve this kind of problem so you just try to do these things now onwards it means try to get the uh, roots of these two equations uh, this one equation okay so that actually it is a frequency equation and when you get the roots of this equation that is nothing but the two frequencies that you will get for this so on the basis of this there are some numericals that we are going to solve in the next presentation so we'll stop here thank you thank you very much